Hi, welcome to Seymour's World Commentary on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Seymour Kazimersky. You can find all my commentaries and Seymour's World's episodes on the ThinkTech Hawaii website. I welcome your comments by email, text, or phone. You can reach me at seymour.kazimersky at gmail.com or my phone number is 808-551-3222. Today's commentary is Happy New Year to all our Jewish friends and families around the world. But this message is for all of us, for Jews, Catholics, Protestants, Arabs, Muslims, anybody who believes in a higher power. If Rosh Hashanah could be summed up in one word, that would be love, potential, and life. Uh-oh, that's three words. Uh, oh, what are you going to do? I'm still learning how to count. Let's like, take a look at each of these words and reflect on their meaning in the context of Rosh Hashanah. Follow me. The first word is love. If you have heard anything about Rosh Hashanah, what you have probably heard is either that it is the Jewish New Year or that it is the Day of Judgment. Well, I'm here to tell you that while both are true, they are also very misunderstood. Let's consider the notion of judgment. The truth is, the prospect of judgment is very uncomfortable, and nobody likes to be judged. We don't like to be judged by a boss, a teacher, and certainly not by our peers. At the same time, there's a very beautiful dimension to judgment. Think about parents and children. Parents are concerned about, and judge, a whole range of items related to their children. Parents are concerned about their children's grades in school, what kind of lunch they have, what kinds of friends they associate with, and what websites they frequent, and a lot more. From the child's perspective, this can seem a bit intrusive, but the truth is there is only one reason why parents are so interested in virtually every detail over their children's lives. It's because they deeply love their children. In fact, one of the most devastating things a parent can do to a child is not to judge. Why? Because a parent who isn't interested in what their child is doing is sending a message that says clearly, I don't care about you. A child who hears such a message will inevitably draw the conclusion that they are not worth their parents' attention. And that is about the most destructive message a child can absorb. On Rosh Hashanah, when we say that God sits in judgment, what we are saying is that God loves us. He cares about each and every one of us. He cares about who we are, how we live, and whether or not we are actualizing the potential he gave us. That the creator of the universe actually cares about little old me is a remarkably empowering and life-giving idea. The reality that we confront on Rosh Hashanah is one that highlights the intrinsic value and preciousness of every life in the eyes of God. Second is potential. Did you ever wonder what Jews are celebrating on Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of the creation of the first human being. The Jewish year begins with focusing on the awesome nature and potential that exists within each of us. When you look at the world around you, it's clear that God is not only quite powerful, but very, very creative. That being the case, God could have launched mankind with a family, a village, or a whole planet filled with people. Why did he begin with just one person? Jewish tradition teaches that God began with one person to teach us about the fantastic potential inherent in each of us. Each of us has the ability to have an impact on the entire world, and each of us is capable of making a world of difference. As we stand at the threshold of a new year, we ask ourselves some simple questions. What can I do in the coming year to actualize more of my potential? How can I contribute even in a small way to making the world a better place? What can I do to make a difference in someone's life? Every Rosh Hashanah represents a vote of confidence from God in our individual personal potential. Every Rosh Hashanah also presents us with a fresh opportunity to unlock more and more of that great God-given gift. Third 
is life. Throughout the Rosh Hashanah prayers, Jews are asking God to remember us for life and inscribe us in the book of life. When Jews greet one another, we say, may you have a good year and may you be written and sealed for a year of good life and peace. Our prayers for life are meant to be understood at face value. We want to live, but they also have a deeper meaning. Consider this. I once met a Holocaust survivor who said, I would choose to go through all those years in Auschwitz again, rather than spend one day of my life as a Nazi. That is an incredible statement. And what it means, I believe, is this. One can be alive, strong and healthy, yet be dead at the same time. A life lived in the boots of a Nazi or under the uh, flag of Al-Qaeda or Hezbollah is a life utterly drained of all meaning. You see, there are certain choices that we make and certain courses of actions that we pursue that have the ability to infuse life with life. And there are others that drain life of everything God intended it for. On Rosh Hashanah, Jews not only ask for life, strive to be people who embrace the kind of values, ideals, and choices that will fill our day with life with meaning, with goodness, with spirituality, with life. I told you this message, this message is for all of us. Jews, Catholics, Protestants, Arabs, Muslims, anybody, anybody who believes in a higher power. I hope it helps you understand the meaning of life. My name is Seymour Kazimersky. You are watching a commentary of Seymour's World, which you can find on the ThinkTech Hawaii website. I welcome your comments by email, text, or phone. You can always reach me at seymour.kazimersky gmail or 808-551-3222. Happy New Year to all of you. Aloha.